Hey, good morning everyone, Trackman44 here. You know, one of the sad facts that you have to deal with whenever you have all the funds on lumber is the fact that you have to go ahead and stack that lumber, you know, for curing, uh, and you have to stack it properly, you know, with certain with a space in between each and every uh, board to minimize the chance of mildewing, you know, in the lumber. Of course, everyone knows that. And also to, uh, to make sure that it gets an even flow of air, a reasonably even flow of air across the, uh, the surfaces, you know, to, to air drive. Another thing, a mistake that I make on occasion and have on my current stack right now is the placement of my outermost uh, stacking strips. You want to keep those very first set of stacking strips within a few inches of the outside edge of your, uh, or the outside ends of your boards to minimize the rate at which it evaporates that moisture from the end of the board. Because if you just put your first stacking strip two feet in, that outside end will have a tendency to split because it releases its moisture much quicker than the rest of the the rest of the boards up in there. And that's another reason why you cut your logs longer than eight foot, longer than uh, ten foot, longer than twelve foot, so that you can cut that little bit of cracking off the end and still end up with eight foot, ten foot, twelve foot material, and so on. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and make me, uh, you know, forty, fifty, maybe a hundred. I don't know whatever whatever I get out of this pile of stuff. Now I typically take these old things and mark them in four foot increments, like in four foot lengths, go ahead and cross cut those first and then begin the process of ripping. And because I do end up with some individual stacks that are just one board wide, I like to have a, a, a pretty large complement of 12 inch stacking strips as well, because that way I can just stack one special stack of lumber, you know, of that particular material. Now, like I say, we used to go ahead and saw these right on our circle mill, you know, back on the home place, and they were much bigger. They weren't uh, going to be quite as small as what they are here. Uh, I think I can do a good job, you know, on the band mill, but it's more user-friendly and quicker, I think, to get a greater quantity of them in the length that I desire in here on the radial arm saw. As I get older, I found out that uh, the sawdust and everything on walnuts and cedar, mostly walnut and cedar, give me a split and sinus headache. So I've, I've gotten to where I've got to wear a good heavy duty high quality mask whenever I'm uh, whenever I'm making small sawdust you know with the little saws the table saw or radar arm saw or with the, uh, the belt sanders or whatever I've got to wear a mask anymore uh, it's just the way it is you know what I mean Now for ones like this, I just go ahead and freehand the straight edge down to give me a semblance of a straight edge up against the uh, up against the rip fence. This one would have made a pretty good board except it's got to rot down the middle and there's so much sap wood on it so it's not really a high quality piece of material. Next thing I do is set the rip fence for three quarters of an inch because I like three quarter, three quarter inch stacking strips. It gets a little dicey running those through there. Occasionally get a bit of a kickback. Don't ever have anybody else in the vicinity because of that reason. But you also, you know, you keep a variety of push blocks. You notice how thin this push block is and it's long. That way I can go in behind that blade and go ahead and push that all the way on through. And then for heavier material, I keep a, a variety of, of large ones that are capable of putting a lot more pressure on a big, thicker material. Put on my face mask.
I don't know, I didn't have count how much I got there, but uh, this is about one third of what I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and cut today. An undesirable portion of the job, but it's something that you, you just got to do. Uh, now, it is easier in a lot of respects doing it on the sawmill, but it's a lot easier in a lot of ways in here, too. And I'm right here in a nice shade. I got a fan blowing, you know, all is good with the universe, you know what I mean? So, at any rate, it's just a quick and simple little thing that, uh, like I said, us guys with the sawmills have to put up with, just have to do. And there's a variety of ways for you to do it. This ain't the only way by any stretch of the imagination. But it's the way I do it because it's most convenient for me. And you know what? This is Tractor Man 44, and I'm out of here, guys.